Hello, everyone. Thank you for time. So here I am to talk about uh, the deal landscape in India, you know, how it's evolving, given the global headwinds. Uh, as all of you would be knowing that uh, investment banking is a much more robust business globally. Uh, but I think in the last two years, we're seeing that uh, a lot of headwinds globally, which is impacting the business. Uh, geopolitical tensions around Russia, you know, South China, Middle East, you know, high inflationary environment leading to high interest rates, which massively impacts the acquisition financing market, which is sort of quite integral to the global buyout scenarios. Uh, commodity market has been very volatile, you know, which obviously sort of leads to shrinkage in global trade, the overall GDP has slowed down. So overall, sort of, you know, globally, the things are very, very sort of slow. Couple of countries in Europe are in recession. US is coming out of their own sort of uh, slowdown issues. China has their own issues. So I think amongst all this uh, global doom, India is one bright spot. And uh, I think uh, the confidence level that we are seeing within the corporates, investors, is, is all time high. Uh, we grew at like 8.4% GDP the last quarter. Uh, three years from now, we should be. Five trillion dollar economy, the third largest in the world, and uh, the best part is the digital economy. You know that's sort of becoming almost a trillion dollars by 2030. In fact, I think now I'm, I'm hearing that you know we will sort of have we soon having ambitions to grow to a 10 trillion dollar economy, right? So, so from that perspective, uh, the country is doing really well. I think thanks to all the uh, economic reforms, the policy initiatives which the government took, you know it's sort of just converting into underlying growth for for the country. I think one big sector, uh, manufacturing, you know, uh, that is sort of seeing a lot of tailwinds, a lot of impetus by the government, uh, the China plus one, the PLI measures, a lot of deal activities sort of expected on the manufacturing side. You know, the contribution to their GDP can be sort of as high as 25 to 30 percent going forward. One thing I would like to add is that, you know, uh, we, we all feel that, you know, we're doing really well, you know, we're, we're growing at a good speed, but I think the scope for future growth, future expansion is massive. Last week I was in Japan and, you know, one statistic which I learned, which was quite interesting, so that there are 1,400 Japanese companies in India. China is 15,000. You know, so that is sort of a big, big uh, difference where, you know, we stand vis-a-vis -vis China. And in fact, China is having their own issues right now. But if you see going forward, we have a lot of catch-up to play. So from that perspective, you know, the good thing is that we are sort of a bright spot right now. Uh, people are very curious about India. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, I, I personally see a lot of, lot of inbound activity happening in the country from markets like Japan, parts of Europe, and U.S. So where are we seeing sort of deal activity, you know? Uh, I would say that a uh, couple of pockets, and I think uh, one of the most important pillars has been the private equity VC market. Uh, I think uh, it, it has always been very active for the last decade or so, but I think the quality of private equity and VC is changing massively, and I think that augurs really well for our country. Uh, I think the, the pools of capital is available for each and every opportunity, whether it's growth capital, seed capital, which have obviously helped the startup ecosystem in India. Uh, the buyout funds were always there, the larger ones, you know, who were focusing on larger, larger uh, opportunities. But I think one very interesting development which has happened in the country is uh, a lot of uh, Indian funds have sprung up, which cater to the buyout scenario for the mid-cap market, which were not there earlier. Uh, and also sort of there are some of these Asian funds, you know, which are looking at India from a buyout perspective. So I think that sort of opens up a really good opportunity set for the mid-cap universe, you know, which was always very dependent on a strategic buyer set from an M&A activity pers perspective. So that, I think, has, has been a big, big development. And of course, uh, from a sector perspective, you know, uh, traditionally from a private equity VC market perspective, you always were very keen on financial services, tech, healthcare, pharma, consumer as the key four sectors that they used to sort of focus on. But given the, given the new initiatives by the government and the geopolitical uh, macro tailwinds, manufacturing and infrastructure real estate are seeing a massive, massive interest from the funds that we speak with. Uh, we foresee these sectors becoming very, very important. 
and a lot of activity happening in these sectors going forward. So, so obviously, uh, uh, private equity VC universe, you know, they they will become much more stronger as a as a client base, as a pool of capital, and you will just see a lot of transfer of ownership from promoters to institutional shareholders, leading to a lot of professionalization of management and overall improvement in governance standards. Again, you know, a very, very strong factor for India's development going forward. In terms of key themes, like I said, you know, 10 years back, you would see a lot of outbound-based acquisitions from India. I think these days, the conversations we are having with Indian promoters, everybody wants to look at only India. So domestic consolidation has become a big play, uh, where uh, you're seeing sort of the bigger boys, you know, uh, going for acquisitions in new technologies, agencies, you know, uh, scaling up their geographical place, scaling up their sector play. So I think consolidation is sort of becoming a big play. And the good thing is that the sellers are also not apprehensive of talking to a fellow Indian promoter or a fellow Indian house. You know, earlier there will be a lot of apprehensions of talking to a, a, a peer because of valuation considerations, you know, uh, leakage of information. But I think the market is sort of maturing. People are becoming a lot more sanguine where uh, 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 innovative deal structures are getting sort of uh, conceptualized and leading to sort of uh, domestic consolidation. So a lot of m and is moving to a domestic m and vis-a-vis a, -vis a cross-border m and which India used to see. At the same time, uh, the global interest is there. So strategics who are not present in India, they are quite intrigued about India at the same time. People who are present in India, they want to scale up. And of course, within all this strategic uh, universe is the private capital, you know, because like I said, uh, the new funds which have come up, so that sort of is actually sort of, you know, putting a lot of peer pressure on the strategics. And that exactly is helping push the valuations up from a seller's perspective. So over and above, basically, uh, the, the consolidation, it, it also sort of acts as a good uh, optionality for the seller to sort of continue, you know, with an upside going forward, not sell full stake, sell a, sell a majority stake, and continue with upside. And of course, the last important part is uh, the IPO markets. Uh, the vibrancy of Indian capital markets has sort of is this returning in a big way. That provides, uh, and the good thing is that our capital markets have been sort of very self-sustaining in nature, uh, not very dependent on the Western markets like they used to be. Uh, so from that perspective, and these, the, the, the vibrancy of IPO markets is very important because that helps us with uh, providing meaningful exits to the investors who come in early in the companies. So there's a good churn of capital which keeps on happening. And that sort of keeps the M&A and the fundraise market also pretty vibrant. I think on the strategic M&A side, I think these are some of the points you know, which we wanted to highlight was uh, in terms of the consolidation play we are seeing. But I think one, one good data point is that the average deal size in the country is increasing. Uh, so you see more, you know, in terms of the billion dollar plus transactions, you know, you just see that the volume is increasing on that side. The average M&A deal size in India now is around $100 million. Uh, so which again sort of talks about the sophistication in the market. Uh, larger players are not shy of going for aggressive acquisitions. Earlier, uh, you know, if you would talk to any of these large houses, uh, they would always sort of talk about build versus buy. You know, the, the, the general comfort was more on the build vis-a-vis -vis buy, but uh, uh, there's a big change, again, in that side, you know, where you're seeing sort of a lot of these large houses being very acquisitive. You know, uh, some of the statistics mentioned over here, people like Reliance, they've actually done more than 40 transactions, you know, and Reliance always used to be a very uh, house of engineers, you know, some more on the build side always. So I think this is a very, very important trend which is happening in the country where the larger houses are... Uh, uh, very, very acquisitive, and they are being very thoughtful about the acquisitions. And you know, they are sort of going in terms of new areas, new technology. Uh, and again, you know, the good trend which is changing in the last three or four years, when tech was more restricted to consumer tech or fintech, I think uh, a lot of focus now we are seeing uh, on new emerging sectors. You know, like space tech, AI, ML, of course, is is one of the hottest buzzwords. Uh, health tech, sustainability, clean energy. 
and uh, people are really hungry for good ideas, good technologies, good opportunities in this side, and, and we are seeing sort of good traction on that side. And given, given at Deloitte, you know, we focus a lot on the mid-cap side of investment banking. And I think the, the one, one of the important things is succession, where sort of we are seeing across sectors, you know, uh, uh, promoters are now very, very open and very pragmatic about uh, catering to, uh, to the next uh, generation, you know, where sort of uh, wherever the main, main guy is having a sense that, you know, his, his, the next generation is not very keen on his business or they might not be able to delve into the, the, the highly competitive market which India is becoming, you know, they actually are taking very, very proactive steps. And we are in conversations with a lot of these kind of corporates across sectors where uh, they are being very proactive while the businesses are doing well. You know, they can fetch good, good valuations. Uh, so no longer it's a taboo word. Uh, we, we did see uh, some activity on the large cap side on, 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 uh, on, on succession planning, but now this is sort of happening across, mid, across the mid cap world in tier two, tier three towns where, you know, I, the, the people were not very comfortable talking about it. So that itself is sort of leading to a lot of M&A. Uh, the buyer market for this is again some of these large international strategics or the domestic strategics. Private equity, like I mentioned, the smaller funds are looking at it, but at the same time, you know, the important theme is platform play, where sort of you acquire a couple of uh, players in the same segment and create a platform and then, you know, sort of uh, make it larger for a, over, for a listing or a potential exit. I think a good example of this is something like a Sona Comstar, which Blackstone did where they acquired Sonar, acquired Comstar, merged them, did, created a created massive value out of that platform and had a blockbuster IPO. Uh, so yeah, so this is sort of uh, a, a great trend. And again, uh, uh, AI is becoming a big, big uh, focus area for I think every corporate and every, I think every person in this room as well. And uh, uh, tech companies, of course, you know, in India, they've already sort of doing good amount of work on the AI side, but at the same time, larger corporates are also very focused on it. I think in terms of the deep tech startup ecosystem, you know, again, it's fascinating the kind of work which is happening in India. And this deep tech, I will include even things like space tech, defense, drones, uh, clean uh, sustainability, uh, apart from AI ML. So, you know, the, there are almost like 300 new startups which came in in 2023. And the kind of capital that they're raising is, 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 is mind boggling and very impressive. So this was sort of a brief on you know, what we are seeing, uh, given the time, and in terms of you know, how we at Deloitte, we can help out. Uh, one, you know, we are a team of about 80 investment banking professionals uh, with experience over 150 transactions, uh, 50, 50 billion dollars uh, in M&A and fundraise transactions. Uh, so we are sort of uh, focusing on core sectors of healthcare, pharma, financial services, industrials, consumer, tech, infrastructure. Uh, so we sort of, uh, we're doing a lot of good work around that. We are leveraging a global network, uh, which I think I would say arguably we have the largest network globally uh, with our member firms. So we have access not only to strategic investors globally, but we also sort of the financial investors, uh, which we cater to the requirements of our Indian clients, uh, help them raise capital, both growth as well as buyout. And at the same time, I think the biggest uh, point of Deloitte is the one-stop shop, the end-to-end M&A services which we provide. You know, apart from investment banking part, you know, we, we, there's a one-stop shop which where we can help out on the M&A tax side, diligence, valuations, and you know, other parts of uh, M&A journey, uh, post-merger integration. So, uh, so we are very excited. I think uh, as a firm, we see a lot of opportunity on the M&A fundraise side. Uh, and happy to take any questions in the tea break. Thank you very much.